Korea is well known for putting great importance on education. On the day of the big university entrance exams, government officials go to work later than normal to let students get to their exam sites on time. And the Air Force suspends flights of noisy planes during the English listening tests. Learning English has always been a priority and a major challenge for Koreans, which explains the flood of online solutions that offer lessons and tutors for quick and easy results. Yet one Korean company has embraced a very fundamental approach to English education, reading. For 13 years, it has been successful in partnering with global institutions like Oxford University Press while utilizing high-tech methods. Hi. What would you like to ask me? Hi, Beef. How was your trip? Did you see the monster? Hi there. The trip was amazing. We didn't actually see a real monster, but Graham painted a... Our globalist today, CEO and founder of iPortfolio, Kim Zong yoon tells us how his company has become a global success and why we should take a fundamentally different approach to English education. Welcome to The Globalist. Uh, thank you for having me in your show. We are very glad you took the time to join us today. It is an interesting area of work that you're in, iPortfolio. I took a look at your homepage, mm -hmm. and it's not typical of an educational uh -huh. platform. What is it that you really do? We're more here to um, reform education. Mm -hmm. especially the English education in Korea. And our members and our company are all focused and aligned to that mission. Mm -hmm. Since uh, our education system is really focused on the college entrance exams, mm -hmm. and including English, and it is treated as a subject, as you grow up in middle school and high school, you're more into test preparation mode. Mm -hmm. So we're focusing on more to fix it from the younger ages. Mm. how we teach them, mm. and I would like to show an example of how it is done to be applied in the um, public education system as well. So then let's, let's hear about your product that is very successful mm. in the market outside of Korea. Mm. What kind of products are you um, making inroads in the global market with? Well, um, I, I'm a science major. I majored in astronomy. Astronomy? Yes, yeah, so I studied the universe. Studying science, natural science, it's like you focus on the root cause. Find out the root cause of the problem and try to solve it. So the, the root cause I identified for, in, for this country's English education system is that we prepare for tests and students become passive mm. on English. But you have to be proactive in language learning. To be able to do that, Reading is the most effective way to support that brain procedures. If you watch a Harry Potter movie versus reading a Harry Potter book, it, it might be the same content with the same story, but your brain functions differently when you watch the video and read the book. You read the book, it's you thinking, and you be the conductor, and uh, you're doing all the thinking process. If you watch a video, if, if you watch the movie, actually Joanne Rowling did all the thinking. The, the director yes. did also the thinking about who to cast, how to edit the movie, which background music he should use. And you're just watching it and you're becoming passive. I agree with you on the reading aspect. I, this is what I think too. But it's a very, a very traditional, it's not a new mm -hmm. approach. 
how do you make that into something that you can, as, as a private company, yeah, yes. allows you to gain income? Um, so that's the point uh, where we apply technology. So we digitized the book. Okay. And we made it into an online reading program. So it's not just a book on digital format. We developed a five-step process so that children reading the book will actually enjoy this content. So we start with a, uh, a warm-up game using the vocabularies appearing in the book. So we call it step one, warm-up. And then we, the second step is listen up. So we hide all the text in the, the book. So you just look at the illustrations, and listen to a voice reading to you in British accent, in an American accent. Mm -hmm. Then you try to guess the story. And then oh. you're... The Without giving you any translation? No translation. Like so everything is dealt in English. And uh, then you get to read at step three. That's read step. You get to look up the dictionary in step three. But before that, you all have to do is uh, you're, you're guessing. That's your thinking process. That has to be um, accumulated. Then step four, we let you pronounce the sentences and we evaluate them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't give out scores. Mm -hmm. And at the last step five is wrap up stage where you have comprehension, quiz, and games. But at the end, we don't give a score. It says we give a chance to children to solve the quiz until you get it right. So after finishing a, uh, the whole book, the five-step process, the student will have a joyful experience hmm. that I want to read the next book. Oh. I think it's a, it's a wonderful mm. idea. But for a parent, you want to sort of know that they're, it's a result-driven mm. industry. You, right. you want to see your child actually uh -huh is gaining English language ability. At the beginning of our uh, service, that was a challenge because parents knew that, oh, this is very good, but I want to see the results. Yes, results. And the progress. So we showed uh, the number of books he or she read, the number of vocabulary exposed. We had a report, but parents were not satisfied. Mm. They want, so would my kid do good at Tests. Yes. School Will tests. they get into a good so, college based yeah, so on what we you're provide a achievement testing oh. every three months mm. and to show the progress. But what we do is we show a real evidence that the child has recorded, let's say, pronunciation. Uh, she recorded a sentence like three months ago, mm. and there's a the same sentence recorded three months after. And that recording is in the cloud. So mothers are forwarded those um, recordings and they hear them. For themselves. Themselves yeah. and like after three months, just showing how their pronunciation improved, the satisfaction ratio went really up. But wow. I told them pronunciation is not, not the, the most important part in your child's um, English skills. There's more. Yeah. And it's not about just pronunciation. Yeah. Yes, I understand. But for a mother, from a mother's perspective, mm -hmm. you want to feel that what you're doing is helping the child. So yeah. I guess that is also um, something comforting to know. Yes. And okay. The other aspect of this is is what you uh, mentioned slightly before the AI Laura aspect of it. Technology is increasingly um, playing a bigger part yes. foreign language education. How is Laura, sort of a, a futuristic aspect of your product? Well, for those who don't know the terminology Laura, Laura is an AI tutor we developed, and it stands for Language Assistant Utilizing Reading Analytics. Mm -hmm. So Laura comes in after reading. So if you haven't read anything, yeah, you're not to allowed to use to mm. access Laura. Laura is not going to be your friend. <laughs> Correct. Uh, so once they finish those five steps, uh. Laura, the, the button is activated and you get to access Laura. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are several activities that Laura can do with the student. And one of the uh, good activity that we have um, designed is interview the main character. Hmm. At school, what do you do? What teachers do is to check whether they understood the book or not. She 
checks up, gives out questions, quizzes, and you get to answer them. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it, that's another passive activity. Mm. So with Laura, after reading the book, you get to choose the character in the book, and you call her, and Laura becomes that character, mm. and you, you get to interview that character. Like you, you're interviewing me, mm. the student gets to ask questions. Hi there. The trip was amazing. We didn't actually see a real monster, but Graham painted a funny one that made everyone laugh. It was a great holiday overall. You didn't see the real monster, but I saw the real monster. Oh, really? That's interesting. Can you tell me more about what the real monster looked like? Like if you're reading Aladdin, for example, mm -hmm. Laura becomes Aladdin, yes. and you get to converse with Aladdin. But is Aladdin, Laura's Aladdin always the same? Or as you converse, does, does the AI change? Uh, Laura, when you are asked to become Aladdin, mm -hmm. first you become Aladdin, but you are to um, personalize your responses to the student oh. because there are different levels. So if the student is in the beginner's level, you talk slowly. Mm. You don't use difficult vocabulary. So you sort of sentences. adjust to the level so of, it's personalized. of the person. So Laura, Laura can do that. A real person teacher might struggle doing that because she has to personalize to each student she teaches. That's very difficult to do. Mm. But artificial intelligence mm. can do that very easily. Laura knows what book she read, the student read, and the vocabulary level, and even the interest of the student. Because it's the student who chose which book to read. Mm -hmm. If the student is into like science, or even like there's a student who reads a lot of books about insects, mm. Laura knows he is interested in insects. She can talk about insects to, you know, encourage mm. the, the conversation. Mm, I see. And, and like there are some, you know, words that a Korean might not be able to pronounce if when Laura or your system is exported overseas, it adjusts to different um, yes. nationalities and, and different languages. Yes. Um, I think we have uh, the largest uh, pool of data of uh, children's uh, recording, voice recordings, in over 100 countries. Oh. Uh, that's, it's a collaboration work with the Oxford University Press, and uh, we are training our voice engine to understand the pronunciation of the children's pronunciation in different countries, Japanese, Korean, we're working on Turkish, Spanish, mm. uh, because the big uh, voice engine from big tech companies, they're most, they understand the English pronunciation of adults, mm -hmm. not the kids. For example, in Korean, you say, a child can say, happy. It's like, it's harapuji. We, we understand it. she's saying grandpa, but the AI system might not understand what she's saying because uh, she doesn't understand happy. Yeah. It's harapuji, right? Yes. So it's a product of uh, hard training. Yep. With 6, a lot 000, of data collection. 60,000 uh, hours of training. Costs a lot of money. <laughs> uh, but now Laura gets to understand the Japanese uh, way of pronouncing their like, own grandfather yeah, names. or like yogurt they, they say yogurto like <laughs> she understands it's yogurt oh. yeah well it's it's just a fascinating product yeah We want to make sure when we do this pilot, you get information which is useful for you. It's up to the customer how many students 
they're gonna invite for the pilot. I hope it will be more than 10 students each. So the other aspect that I thought was interesting is your relationship with Oxford University Press. That happened, as you said, 11 years ago. Um, yes. And that was a very, that was a long time ago mm -hmm. in which... Um, that was our, was our second year. Yeah. After our... Uh, how did they, how did you get Oxford University Press to trust a Korean um, educational startup? Well, we were very lucky. We, it was our second year after we started business and we were only six people in our company. And uh, we met them in Frankfurt Book Fair in Germany, mm. the largest uh, book fair. And at that time, uh, Oxford, as known as OUP, Oxford mm -hmm. University Press, they were looking for their digital textbook platform because mm -hmm. a lot of schools demanded the digital version instead of the print. And uh, by accident, uh, they saw our product and they invited would you like to participate in this blind test they're doing? With uh, They mentioned the names of the company. Mm -mm. And they were all global companies. Um, I would have think, yeah, I would have thought so. Listed in uh, New York. And they were all an ex-Apple you know, engineers coming out, establishing a company, getting investment, four forty $40 million investment type of startups. They were participating in that blind test. And we were asked to, do, asked to uh, join at the last moment. But uh, they were given like six months to prepare for the solution. <laughs> we, were, we were given less than six weeks. Wow. And uh, Oxford uh, did a blind test with 10 schools. Okay. So after eight months, the teachers in those schools voted which solution they would like to use in class. I didn't know the result, but after eight months, uh, I was asked to do a presentation in front of the board of OUP, in front of the CEO and the board members. I thought everybody was doing that, the mm -hmm. other competitors. But uh, in fact, uh, later on I found out nine out of ten schools chose our solution. Whoa! And that was, so actually OUP did not have a choice. But I didn't know that. <laughs> but, the, but they did want to sort of make sure that, that the CEO was yes, able to follow up. Yes, because the staff in OUP, they, they could not propose our solution to the board because we were just six people company. They're not sure if we, we will be sustaining <laughs> after a couple of years. And uh, so they made the board decide. So wow. you guys decide directly. Yeah. So I did a presentation in front of the board. And actually, I did a uh, negotiation right on site. And uh, she asked me, how, how much would it cost to hire you guys? It's like, I'm sorry, I'm, it, this is not for sale. Oh. Um, what I want, a relationship that I could help, because digital is something new, even though Oxford University Press has a history of over 500 years, digital is something new, but we're more an expert in that area, especially mm -hmm. in English education. We have both expertise, the pedagogy and the technology. And I will help you guys uh, succeed in this area. And later on, if this succeeds, we share the revenue. And if it doesn't succeed, I get no profit out of it. Mm -mm. So that's, that's the startup spirit. I became a real startup at that moment. And uh, we made a deal. And then uh, after a couple of months, we signed the contract. And still, Oxford did a pilot test I'm for sure. another You're, year. I yeah. mean, you were only about a year or so old at yes. the time. I'm from Korea, yeah. um, no track record. So, but at least uh, Korea had uh, a good reputation in the IT industry. IT industry, yes. And um, I had nothing to lose at that time. So, <laughs> really, I had nothing to lose. So, take it or leave it. I was um, and wow. because I thought the other four global players had a better chance. So I said, okay. I, I might just, as well say what I want to yeah, say. And, <laughs> yes. and that worked. And uh, after a year and a half. It's named uh, Oxford Learner's Bookshelf, mm. powered by Spindle Books. Spindle Books is our solution, so we had a co-branding agreement. So our brand was on the left side, 
their brand was on the right side. Wow. And uh, so overseas were more um, popular. Thanks to Oxford, uh, mm. they took our brand uh, on their solution and made it official uh, around in 2015, yeah. the official platform for their, all their digital all, all course the books. Digi all their Oxford University the, Press Library books. The, the ELT, English language, language. teaching materials. Oh. So right now it holds around 4,500 titles, targeting all across all ages, university students, mm. Elementary to and uh, even graded readers mm. are inside those. And all those titles are, are available through Spindle Books, which is your, yes, your yes, company. Yes, it's our solution. Yes. Your solution. Yeah. It was 11 years ago. Yeah. Still going on strong, the relationship? Yes, yes, it's getting stronger. I'm invited to a lot of board meetings these days. Um, and uh, <laughs> You're not asked to present like 11 years ago? No, I'm not, no longer that small company. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, my, they might think, oh, we have a now a tougher CEO to, to <laughs> negotiate with, but uh, we're in very good relationship. Mm. So Oxford, and it's the standard of English. I don't want to ruin that uh, image, so I, we're very cautious. We try to be, provide a perfect solution, and uh, that's why our engineers are working day and night to provide the best uh, top-notch quality that uh, nobody can uh, beat in the industry. So mm. we're very proud. Outside of Korea, what are the developments? How are you doing in other countries? So in other countries, the, the major development uh, in other countries, the successful stories, uh, also come with uh, Oxford University Press, the collaboration mm -hmm. with Oxford University Press. You know, Not a lot of people know Spindle Books is a Korean-based mm. solution. I don't think they know. I don't think anyone. Um, then, <laughs> that means we're becoming a global company. Very global, so yes. Nobody labeled us as a Korean. But Oxford asked us, the, the five-step reading program, yes. they asked us, oh, they want the same thing under their name so that they will spread it out across their global network. Mm. So we built a service called Oxford Reading Club. Mm. It's a clone of what we do in Korea. So we manage the system. It's our pedagogy inside applied, mm -hmm. but it's just the contents from Oxford and the sales power. So we do a lot of collaboration and uh, the fastest growing market for Oxford Reading Club is in Japan. Really? So we're in the same time zone. Yes, English is a second language English country. And very similar culture. And I meet uh, the managing director of uh, uh, OUP Japan uh, very frequently. Just last month, we met three times face to face. Mm. We discuss about how we should penetrate the market. So we're doing a lot of new stuff, mm. new testings in, in Korea and in Japan. And after it's proven, it goes global with yeah. the help of the, the Oxford's uh, global uh -huh. network. So I know, the, the final mm. question, I know that a lot of people seeing this program thinking, how did he learn his English? I mean, he didn't have <laughs> um, this program when he grew up. So how, how, is, how is your English so good? Well, my father was a military attaché uh, to the Philippines, and it's an English-speaking country. That was in the early 80s, um, when Philippines uh, had higher income than Korea. Yes. <laughs> and I attended, I, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I was fortunate to attend uh, an, an international school in Manila, and I picked up my English back mm. then. But to maintain my English was uh, a much more challenge in Korea. <laughs> After I came back, no English speaking environment, no English content. You didn't have YouTube. You had AFK. We yeah, had AFK. My, my, my yes. father. Yes, it's American yes. Forces <laughs> Korean Korea Network. Network. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a TV so, show. Uh, my father always recommended don't watch Korean TV, try to watch AFK. And so actually, I did. I read a lot of books. A lot of friends who came back at this similar time, uh, they they lost their language skills. Yeah. But well, you I and did. I, sir, well, I came back a little earlier uh -huh, because I'm uh -huh. older, but we we share the same kind of. You really had to work hard to maintain your English at yes, the time. Yes, I did, and through that efforts, it became the ingredients of mm. what I do right now, uh, mm. because um, since middle school, it was in my head always that this has to change. Language is not something. It's not recalling what you have memorized. That's not language. You have to accumulate the experience of thinking in that target language. That's why reading is the most effective one. Mm. It makes you think in that target language. That's what I learned during all those 
struggling, you know, years of trying to maintain my English. And uh, now I'm adopting those ideas I developed since middle school in my uh, business mm. of providing an English reading service. Mm. Well, it's a very exciting development. I love the fact that you take something that is so fundamental and then applying it with the high tech and technology and taking it into the future. Um, I do hope that you accomplish your mission um, sooner rather than later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that's it for me. I'll be back next week with another globalist who's putting Korea on the map. Sun Jie out.